Hi folks, I am Divok and welcome to the Hero Preview for Necrophos. If you want to be a persistent terror on the battlefield, then you need to utilize Necrophos in Artifact. Behold, the Pope of Pestilence. Rotengier, at least I think that's how his real name is pronounced, was a lowly monk who took advantage of a plague to advance his career and make a quick profit. After the plague was enclosed into a smaller area, the authorities banished Rotengier to the plague lands, but he survived. He became one with the plague, it feeding into his own innate power, and he now roams the land, spreading disease and decay, becoming ever stronger. Necrophos is a 5 attack, 0 armor, and 6 health black hero. Now, 506 isn't necessarily the most impressive stat line out there. We've definitely seen worse, but it definitely falls below the average. 5 attack does deal with most creeps, including those pesky melee creeps, but hero-wise, 5 attack can only one-shot Crystal Maiden, Meepo, Lion, Prolex, and Riley, who are all not necessarily known for their stats anyway. Now, while 6 health does leave you open to a lot of easy damage, for example, 2 hits from an Eclipse, or, or at least half of Mystic Flare's damage, his ability, which we'll get into later, does help a lot with this. So in the grand scheme of things, yes, these are weak stats, but his passive and his premier card really help with that. Necrophos' ability is Sadist. Sadist is a passive ability that modifies Necrophos with plus one health after an enemy neighbor dies. Now, I just wanna quickly go through the trigger of this ability. In order to get the plus one health, an enemy, so that's anyone on the other side of the lane, neighbor, which is any of the enemies directly opposite you, or the enemy either side of that enemy, must die while Necrophos is alive. Now this ability is how Necrophos deals with the stat problem. He becomes super tanky after killing just a few enemy creeps, all the while dealing that 5 damage consistently. The best way to utilise this is to set Necrophos up for kills, or better still, kill during the action phase. If you manage to kill off enemy neighbours during the action phase, there is nothing, or at least largely nothing, your enemy can do to stop you. Whereas if you rely solely on the combat phase, they might be able to buff up the units across from Necrophos to make sure they don't die to him. Now just like any ramping mechanic, this does have a poor start. And the whole point of it is that you have to get over that poor start to really cash in on the big improvements later on. Necrophos will likely die a lot early game, especially if you don't get the trigger sadist. But if you do get one or two ticks through early, he can really become a force to be reckoned with. Necrophos' premier spell is Heartstopper Aura. For four mana, Modify a black hero with deal 2 piercing damage to this hero's enemy neighbours before the action phase. This is unlike any spell we've seen. This modifies a hero with a brand new ability. Not only that, but it also stacks. You can keep powering up Heartstopper Aura, just like it was an ability in Dota 2 for example. Now, the damage from Heartstopper Aura triggers much like Luna's Lucent Beam, which if you're not sure how, you can check out our guide in the top right corner. But basically, before any cards come into play during the action phase, this damage will go through. Now 2 damage, scaling up to 4 and 6 if you keep stacking this ability, doesn't necessarily sound like too much for 4 mana. However, this is piercing damage. This is some of the only sort of ticking over time piercing damage, aside from the likes of Zeus's passive, which is only 1 piercing damage. This is a really nice way to deal with some of the big, tankier, armor-cladded heroes that are usually resistant and can largely ignore this low damage income. However, to make full use of Heartstop Aura, you need to make sure the hero that it's on survives combat. Because if it doesn't survive combat, then much like Luna, you're not getting the use out of this ability during the next action phase. Or rather, before it. Because you'll be spending one turn on the sidelines. However, Heartstopper Aura and Sadist Necro's passive really have a nice synergy together. Sadist provides you with more health, so you're less likely to die, and you can get Heartstopper Aura off more often. And Heartstopper Aura either reduces the health of your enemy neighbours, or even better, might kill them before the action phase, before your enemy has any chance to do anything. You might be buffing Necro's health up with Heartstopper Aura and Sadist. With that said, I'm going to go through the early, mid and late stages of the game and let you know what sort of playstyles, spells and items you should be looking to utilise with Necrophos. Now, Necrophos, like many other heroes, isn't going to get a lot of gold early, so the likelihood is your early gold will all be spent on consumable items. However, he is a black hero, so if you do have some sort of gold ramp, you might be able to get some cheap equipables early on. Now you need to try and get Sadist to trigger early on in the game, wherever possible. 
The damage mid to late game can easily go over 6 plus. One little short sword is plus 2 damage, which means basically any hero in the game currently would be able to kill Necrophos. However, you know Necrophos isn't going to be that good early on, so do not be afraid to trade him. Just make sure you are getting some stacks of Sadist out of the trade. In terms of spells, you can set up the Sadist with black spells that go across lanes, especially in the early game when your enemy has fewer ways to get around it. Grazing Shot, a 1 mana, 2 damage black card, which fires across lanes, and Pick Off, a 4 mana, 4 damage card that equally fires across lanes, are the perfect candidates here. If you don't just want to rely on black spells, you can also look to try and get some cleave going with Necrophos, because cleave hits all enemy neighbours, and Sadist benefits from killing enemy neighbours. Currently, the best ways to get this are through Clear the Deck, the 4 mana red spell, and Empower, Magnus's green premier spell. Finally, don't forget to start equipping that Heartstopper aura. It stacks, so you want to start adding it to a hero early on to get as many stacks as possible on a hero, and not to mention the full use out of it, because it triggers every single turn that character's in play. Moving into the mid game, if you got to around 10 health, Necro will start to be a nice blocker now. So position him in a lane of contestion so you can always cast black spells as long as he lives. In terms of items, you've now got some pretty stocky health. So try and add some armor to that. Chainmail at seven gold for two armor or Stonehall Plate at six gold for one armor now plus one armor after every combat phase are brilliant items for Necrophos once he's got some health because it makes it that much harder to chip down his already tanky state. Especially Stonehall Plate, if you've managed to get that Hearthstop Aura on Necrophos, it really does benefit surviving the combat stage because you'll start getting those extra points of Sadist, those extra points of Stonehall Plate armor, and you'll be getting that Hearthstop Aura damage out every single turn. For mid-game spells, you want to look at Payday. Payday in the perfect position can be game winning. Now Necrophos is hard to remove once he's got some health online, so you can use Necrophos as an almost guarantee that you'll be able to get Payday off exactly where you want to. Now don't forget that the mid game for Necrophos is basically as a damage sponge, so use Blue's ability to change enemy targets to Necrophos if they're hitting something else of value. Good examples of this are Battlefield Control or Ventriloquy. Moving into the late game, if you're ahead, your health is now crazy high. You are basically unkillable at this point, or at least it's not really worth trading into you, so abuse that. If you're behind, you'll still have some health, and importantly you'll have, probably have more health than any other black hero, so make sure that Necrophos is exactly where you need him, when you need him. Good positioning is the key when you're behind. In terms of items in the late game, you are now a super tank, so get some damage online. I'm talking broadsword, or if you can afford it, Apoth Blade. Late game black spells are absolutely fascinating. The ones we've seen so far seem to excel at this cross-board super control. I'm talking about Assassinate, Sniper's 7 mana, 10 piercing damage across lanes card, or Steam Cannon, the improvement that for 7 mana will allow you to do 4 piercing damage across lanes per turn. Make sure you get Necrophos in an earlier lane so you can take control of the later ones from his position of advantage. And of course, remember, no one will be able to kill Necrophos, so you can play these cards exactly when you need to, rather than have them forced out of you early because you're worried about losing your caster. Despite being a plague spreader and a generally not nice guy, even Necrophos has some friends. Sniper and Phantom Assassin, for example, for their high value spells that need a good caster, they're pretty good friends with Necrophos. They themselves won't be able to survive long enough to get these spells off. So, Necrophos is the perfect vessel for that. Another friend that adores Necrophos is Sola Khan. She loves Heartstopper Aura, especially if you can stack it three times on her, because plus six damage is likely enough to clear the path out in front of her and get that really hard hitting tower damage in. Now Necrophos's benefits are largely there for black cards, because he's this tanky caster. However, there are certain red, blue and green spells that can help. But this doesn't take away from the fact that Necrophos is probably the best mono black hero we've seen so far, because every mono deck needs something that can survive long enough to cast. Now, the authorities of Necrophos's Priory aren't just the ones hunting him down, he does have plenty of enemies out there. Because he's a high health tanky caster, negative armour is one of his worst nightmares. Bristleback, Skyrath Mage and Ursa are all fantastic at giving Necrophos negative armour so all of your damage is amplified against him. Equally, Necrophos's own low attack means that he will lose out against high armour targets unless he has Heartstopper Aura equipped. So, the likes of Mazzy, Axe and Bristleback will all be able to take Necrophos out in a bruiser on bruiser fight. If you aren't careful, you might forget that Necrophos is even on the battlefield, but not all forms of death come in an instant. Necrophos brings a slow, agonising end to his enemies, and typically there is absolutely nothing they can do to stop him. 
Thanks for watching our hero preview for Necrophos. If you'd like to help us out, feel free to click the like and subscribe button, and don't forget about the bell icon so you never miss a video ever again. I've been Divok of the Artificers Guild, and I will see you next time.